Uh, we know how to solve homogeneous second order linear differential equations, but how can we solve second order linear equations if the right hand side is non-zero? In that case, our general solution will be the sum of some particular solution and the solution of the homogeneous problem. Why is that? And why do you have the full solution in that case? That's what you will learn in this video. So, how do, do you solve an inhomogeneous second order linear di differential equation? Uh, so, that's the di differential equation of the form a times y double plus b times y prime plus c times y equals g of x. Well, first of all, we will solve this problem with the right hand side set of zero, which is called a complementary equation. So, we solve the a problem for yc, a times yc double plus b times yc prime plus b times yc equals zero. I've already learned how to do that, so you then find this yc. Then in the second step, you find a particular solution, y particular, yp, which satisfies this equation over here. How do you find yp? That will be the subject of later videos. We will just state that you are able to find a particular solution which satisfies the full equation. And then, first step, you just add 1 and 2. The total solution is the yc plus yp. So, two questions. Why is this a solution and why is this a general solution? Well, why is this combination a solution? Just plug it in into the differential equation and see what happens. So, we plug in y equals yc plus yp, yc plus yp and yc plus yp over here. We collect all the terms with the yc's, so we get the a times yc double plus b times yc prime plus c times yc. That's this part. And we collect terms with the yp. a times yp double plus b times yp prime plus c times yp. That's this part. And now we see this. Uh, the first part is a solution of the homogeneous equation, so this equals zero. The second part, according to step two, was uh, uh, equal to g of x. So we get that we uh, 0 plus g of x equals g of x. So indeed, yc plus yp is a solution of our uh, full problem. So why is it the general solution? Why can't we find more solutions than that? Well, in order to see that, we set u equals y minus yp. So suppose we have found our yp. We now define a new u equals y minus yp. We don't know the y yet, but that doesn't matter because we know y equals u plus yp, substitute that into our differential equation, so we'll have a u plus yp, u plus yp, and a u plus yp over here. Uh, uh, we know that that has to be equal to g of x. Now we have a times yp double plus b times yp p prime, so those terms together are already equal to g of x. So it means that a times u double plus b times u prime plus c times u has to be equal to zero. And we know how to solve this problem. The general a solution of this problem is the a solution of the complementary equation. So you know the general solution of this problem, u, has to be equal to yc of x, and uh, substitute that back over there. And uh, you see that your general solution is indeed y, the solution of the complementary equation, plus a particular solution, yp.